What's up guys and welcome back to the next game of the Yugi Tuber Grand Championship. I'm your MC here today, Gage Poljack. Nim Nim, you guys saw my match, I was the first one to play and I absolutely scraped Eric Evans. He was still a good chap though, good game. And I'm here color co well, color commentating for me is Alex Simo, who's also being you guys are going to be watching right now. What's going on everyone? We got Nim Nim here that's going to be doing the play-by-play -play. since this is actually my match. I'm going up against DZ for Doug Zeef as a lot of you might know him from TCGplayer.com. So I'm actually going to be playing Fire Kings and Doug is going to be playing Spirit Hand Trap Tricks. So it seems like a very interesting match. I didn't know DZ would be playing uh, Spirits. I didn't know that was his signature deck. So it was a kind of an interesting choice. I already knew Alex would right off the bat was going to play Fire Kings. That's his thing. So well, it looks like we open up with DZ setting three and passing. And Alex is going to activate a Tenki, but it's going to get stopped by a Swift Mystical Space Typhoon. So it's so. funny because originally Doug was going to play Volcanics. And that's what he told me. And then once he found out that I was his round one match, he realized that Volcanics are probably the worst possible matchup for Fire Kings. <laughs> and that's also what kind of made him change his mind. So Alex is going to chain two MSTs to hit the other two back rows just blindly, and he's going to hit a Book of Moon and a Bottomless Trap Hole as well. I did that there just to simplify the game state. And it looks like DZ if Doug is going to summon a Nikitama, and Nikitama is the one that normal summons another one, right? Nikki Tom is the one that grants an additional normal summon. That's right. Yeah, and he doesn't. It doesn't look like he has something else, does it? Oh, well. uh, he might. I think he's just asking if the summons okay. Okay. Because it's a condition. It's not. It's like um. It's like Evil Swarm Caster, so it's not an effect. But it doesn't look like Doug has another spirit to summon, so he's just gonna attack for eight hundred and go to the end phase, returning his Nikitama to hand. And, and so, Alex, you drew into a Onslaught of the Fire Kings, which is a ridiculous card if you can actually get it. I don't think it's that good against Spirits, though, because everything just goes back to hand. It is, and that's actually where um, both Doug and I actually didn't realize, because you're going to see here, I'm going to flip up this skill drain, and both of us don't realize that in the end phase that the Nikki Thomas effect is negated, so the he's not supposed to return to the hand, but for some reason, both of us, like, just completely, like, negated that fact. Oh, you didn't realize? So wait, he's gonna return that Nikki Thomas in the hand at the end phase? Yeah, it's like I activated it, and he well, just, he puts it right back, and we both, like, just completely, like, ignored you it. You think that would be the whole point you'd throw down that skill drain anyways, right? It was, but, like, I guess we just totally forgot about it, but it's okay. It's a fun well, game, it wasn't that big a deal. But, going back to what you were saying, Onslaught of the Fire Kings, in my opinion, is one of the most broken cards in Yu-Gi-Oh. <laughs> it's just it's, so powerful. Oh, and a Trap Tricks Diana, probably one of my favorite cards, actually, it just got thrown down. <laughs> I mean... Now that he's summoned a monster that's not a spirit, I was really happy to see that. Because mm -hmm. now that Onslaught is live. Absolutely, and what do you think the first thing I'm going to do is? <laughs> also, that Circle of Fire Kings is going to come in handy if he happens to have, like, one of those two back rows happens to be, like, a trap or something. But, oh, the Solemn Warning is coming down. That was really bad, yeah. That's powerful. It is. And it's good, though, too, because um, for those of you who don't know, um, you have to... For Garunix is really weird to stop. You can only stop it being summoned by negating the onslaught, or you have to negate it from when it's being special summoned back from the graveyard. It doesn't work any other way. And a Forbidden Lance is going on the Baron, but that's a wait. That's no. It, the Fire Kings have to be destroyed by card effects. No, Barong is the only one that has to be destroyed specifically by a card effect. Yaksha is battle or card effect. So I'm or curious to know why you didn't chain circle. There, I don't have there. a fire in grave to chain circle. Oh, because you have to special for someone from grave. That's, that's when I when he, when he, I saw the lance, I was like, I can't believe he's actually running lance. That's really good. <laughs> that's a good idea though, because like the meta is so under well, the quote unquote meta for this tournament is so undefined. Like everyone's right. gonna be playing their signature deck, so there's a whole lot of options. And so I'm just laughing at this point because yeah. I have that bottomless. I could not bottomless the Dianea, and he has a Nikki Tama and a Kage Takage. All right, so the we, magic of editing, we're going straight into round two. Now, Gage, what would you want to do? Would you want to go first or second? Well, playing Fire Kings, I would personally... Well, we're playing against Spirits. So personally, I would want to go first and see what I can set up. Like, if I can get a Garunix out like during the end phase somehow. Like, I want to get something established on board before right. I have to deal with all of the traps to come up. Mm-hmm. 
but when it comes to spirits, uh, like I both kind of both decks kind of want to go first. I would think uh, Doug would want to go first more so because he can get his traps live on your turn. Mm -hmm. And I knew Doug is is known for playing this spirit hand trap trick deck. So even though I have not seen hands as of this point, I know he's playing them. Mm -hmm. So I just assume that that set card is a hand. And that's a set Yaksha you have, right? It is. Okay, and I'm assuming, yeah, you're going to flip the Torrential Tribute there. Absolutely. He's still going to get the plus off the Mermilio, but it's still a pretty good exchange in and, my favor. Yeah, it doesn't matter because that Fire Hand's no longer live, and you also get a Garunix in Graveyard to come back next turn. Exactly. So that's a very powerful play, and it nets you a lot more advantage than you think. Even if uh, Doug is going to get the, the plus off of the bottom, uh, the Trap Tricks Mermilio, you still make up with it with having a Garunix to come back next turn. And it's not going to matter because, as you see, I have Circle in my hand anyway, and I have one set on the field as well. So if, as long as he doesn't have a Solemn Warning, if that gets out and he has anything to stop it, I can immediately dodge yeah, it. Yeah, you circle. also conveniently drew that Forbidden Lance, too, to dodge. So... Uh, Doug activates that Deep Dark Trap Hole, which would banish my Garunix, which is really bad, but luckily I have the Circle to save it for another turn. Mm-hmm. I was cur I'm curious to know why you didn't burn the Forbidden Lance to force out the bottomless trap hole, and then have the uh, th and if he you use the bottomless trap hole, just chain circle to that. I figured just using the circle was just the better play, so then Garunix is just safe and just won't do anything else. Because I figured that he's gonna. I'd rather just have it just for more guaranteed protection. Because if he has anything else, I can use the circle again on his turn to circle back out the everything else mm -hmm. so but that doesn't look like it's gonna happen now because he popped your your circle during the end phase with a mermilla exactly which i didn't know that that was gonna happen mm -hmm. so 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 he goes ahead and uses breakthrough skill to negate grunix which i was actually that wasn't that bad i didn't really mind but then unfortunately once i saw the second mermilio hit i was like okay so like i'm gonna, gonna go, i'm gonna get one -on one here or casteled either or works pretty well i guess Typically, they go for 101 because they'd rather have the Garunix be underneath the 101 since um, my deck is just all destruction effects. Mm -hmm. It's just that much more of a pain in the ass for Fire Kings to get through a 101 than a Castell. Because if, we, if they make Castell, we can just blow it up instantly and they achieve nothing from it. So there's the and 101. Know, yep. And there goes your, your Garunix, unfortunately. <laughs> Back in the days of hat format, that was that was just every game. <laughs> so it looks like the Silent Honor arc is going to go crash into that Yaksha, and you're going to now at this point. Him. I actually considered chaining the Forbidden Lance or using the Forbidden Lance in response to the attack to make the 101 force the material off, but I didn't have a way to get the Garunix back out, so I just decided to let it go and save the Lance for a better play. I guess that's a good idea, but you could have also assumed the fact that you had your Fire Hand and in hand and then you could have like forced the material off the sound honor arc to make that fire hand live because i could now you're sitting here with a, a fire hand that can't do anything and a needle ceiling now which needle ceiling that's a really interesting card i didn't think how does it work in the fire king like does it work good enough you think it's amazing in Fire Kings because you can use it just to protect Garunix, for example. So if they use Bottomless and if the monsters are right, you can chain Needle Sealing to destroy everything. Um, you actually see I will resolve it, but it just has a lot of synergy with a lot of the cards in the deck. You can destroy the Barongs or the Yakshas, um, the Fencing Fire Ferrets. It's a good thing that Doug summoned that Nikatama because now that Fire Hand's alive. Yeah, absolutely. So I can just pop that with the fire hand and get out an ice hand. Assuming he doesn't have a solemn warning. Which I think he... He already used it, though, this game. He used the solemn warning on the uh, onslaught. Or was that last game? That was last game. So out comes ice hand. I know people will miss these cards. <laughs> and this is just a really interesting board now. Doug's back row is just completely loaded. And there's the Royal Decree, which is going to shut all of his back row out, provided Doug doesn't have a Mystical Space Typhoon. Provided. <laughs> yeah, so I just go ahead and set around. that, because I want to get that online as quickly as I can. Because Fire Kings don't really need traps. No, well, you, what, what traps do you have set back there? You have a Lance set back there, which would still be live, and you have a the Needle, needle ceiling. ceiling, which isn't really right. doing you anything right now. 
I think I think Fire King's play. And unfortunately, there goes the Mr. Space Typhoon in the end. Yep. <sighs> I was a, that was very sad when that happened, but it's okay. I worked around it. That f- ice hand is still going to be alive though, which is really helpful. And that sixteen hundred defense, if he draws into a Nikatama or the Aratama, he can't get over it, and a Mermillo mm. can't get around it either. No. So that was what's really good is that he's forced to use the one one to attack over it. And I think he might do that this turn. I don't remember. No, he just uses the pass action. And there goes another Ice Hand. Now, I'm curious to know if you're going to make an exceed with that, or are you just going to set it and pass? Because both seem like actually... How many Fire Hand and Ice Hand did you side in? I only... No, I main the, the hands, Oh, actually. and how many do you um, main? It, I only main two and okay, two. Okay, so that's and kind of... I, the reason I chose to set that Ice Hand is because now Needle Sealing is online because there's four monsters that's true, on the field. That's true, but Ice Hand, if you Needle Sealing it, your own Ice Hand, it's not going to get its effect. It's okay, though, because I have the face-down ice hand that won't get destroyed because uh, Needle Sailing only destroys face-ups. Mm-hmm. So assuming um, Doug was going to go for a big push, I just would flip the Needle Sailing right then and there. I would have... Because it's just it's an awkward position for him either what way. What would you have considered about summoning like an Exiton Knight or something to potentially just clean his whole board because you have Forbidden Lance to back it up? I could have, but the 101 wouldn't have been destroyed That's then. true. That's very true. So that was the reason why I didn't go into Exiton there. I figured that I would go into Exiton once I removed the material from the 101, and he gets the Void Trap hole there, which was really interesting to see. I didn't know if he main decked or side decked that, because it doesn't really do anything against Garunix. I believe it stops the effect of Garunix. Yeah. Oh, this is good. Doug flips the Ice Hand here, and this and is what forces down, the uh, Needle Sealing. The Needle Sealing is going to come down out after he exceeds, so you're going to get the additional plus off of that as well, and the Ice Hand's not going to be able to resolve However, Abyss well, Dweller is going to stop your own ice hands, which sucks. Well, th- this was a huge misplay on my part. I should have actually needle sealing when he flipped the ice hand, because now, um, if he does attack my face down ice hand with the 101, it won't get its effect because he's going to chain the effect of Dweller. Yeah, something you could have done is you could have activated needle sealing and chained your Forbidden Lance on the Silent Honor arc. Well, no, wait, that'd be a bad idea, but I was thinking... What that would have did is made Ice Hand not live, so he couldn't be able to special summon a Fire Hand off of that. Well, exactly, and that's why I decided to wait you instead. Could have, because yeah, I you could have lanced your face up Ice Hand, and that would have been equally as powerful. That's true. I could have, in retrospect. Now this was interesting. I'm like, I'm deciding if I want to keep my Ice Hand, and I'm like, well, I might as well because then I can just go ahead and swing into the 101 next turn. And then I can just mount some sort of offense in a way because then I can leave him without any monsters. Mm-hmm. So I felt like using the lance there was the correct play because I was still under Dweller, so I pretty much. Had oh yeah, Dweller what is still in effect there. That's true. Exactly. So I was I was forced to use the lance there to protect the ice. You can hand. see me flipping out in the chat over there because the decree wasn't flipped. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I was really nervous here though because I knew I had to attack with the the ice hand to just see if i could clear the 101 but i was fearing if he had a deep prison or anything like that two of his back row are known at this point i know he has the bottomless and the void and i know he has well. the void trap hole but i don't know what his other two back row are so here I'm fire just hand has 1600 attack correct yes. oh so i don't know if this would have been the correct play because you're running straight into a bottomless trap hole which would leave you with no cards on field. I mean, you get to pop on the back row and hope you get lucky by hitting the bottomless, which you do know what it is, though, I'm pretty sure. No, because I, no, I use the ice hand to pop the bottomless, you still, and now I get the fire yeah, hand. Yeah, now you can get the fire hand now, which is the... Exactly. exactly. I knew exactly which one the bottomless was. See, that was the question I was thinking of. I don't know if he set one or two when he searched the bottomless or whatever, but since you know, then might as well go ahead. That void trap hole is not no, really exactly. helping him too much. I wouldn't have done that if I did not know for a fact which one the bottomless was. If I didn't, I would have just left the ice hand sitting in defense mode. How are those wolf barks and the fire fist bear working for you? We haven't seen them all game. <laughs> I don't think I do see them all game. <laughs> <laughs> now, wolf bark. But in fire kings in general, with wolf bark being to three, it's just now incredible. wolf bark because now you have some you have like late game recursion. It's really wolf good. bark can get back a. Uh... Yaksha as well, right? As well as bear. You can get back any fire oh, beast warrior. That's so very you can get back powerful. Yaksha, Barong, Bear. Yeah, it's really good. So it looks like So he summons the Aratama there, just gets a search and just oh, passes. Oh, Thunder King Ryo, that's really nice. 
Be- well, what you could do at this stage is you could just dark hole the board and then summon the Thunder King Ryo. Because you're out of ice hands anyways, and then, well, no. What, the Thunder King could potentially stick, but if it would, he would he could try to make like an X seed with his spirits, and then you can just mm-hmm. negate it and leave him with no advantage again. I did think of that, but I prefer to just swing in with the fire hand because he doesn't know that I only play two of each mm-hmm. hand. And I believe he says that in the chat, actually. Um, so I figured if I do that, it's going to be the same thing as if I dark hold, except in this case, I get to keep the dark hold. So then in main phase two, I actually just summon the Thunder King. I could have summoned it prior, but I rather would just do it after in case he had like a mm-hmm. mirror force or something. And then that way it prevents him from adding any more cards to his hands with Aratama. And I know exactly. However, what his having hand that is. breakthrough skill in the graveyard, that's very devastating. That's a good card to play. I, I always think breakthrough skill has a lot of versatility in any format it's played in. It's just this it seems really good right now. I don't Absolutely. know if Doug is aware he has one in the graveyard though, because that's able to just he's able to easily play around that Thunder King then. I believe and I believe that's what I was checking his graveyard for as well, was to see if he had one. And I want to say that's what oh, he does. He has oh, no, a second he has a breakthrough second skill one. anyways. <clears throat> so he goes ahead and uses that. This is actually where he makes a misplay. And he admits this in um, his commentary of this video. Which you'll see later on why that's actually relevant. And so he's getting his search off Eritama again. Yaksha. Getting that Yaksha. He gets his own Yaksha. <laughs> I know. I thought that was really funny. <laughs> and i forget what he goes into he's gonna go into utopia obviously that's the only choice utopia! he makes a lavalvo oh, that's, right. that's a very i think that was also is that where he made the misplay he admits no no the misplay was activating the breakthrough skill there's a reason he makes the lavalvo chain so what he does is he's gonna stack bls on oh the top wow that's very deck. powerful it's very powerful because in a simplified game state, with me only having two cards, having a BLS Doesn't is actually really good. Doesn't he need really to detach good. the Nikatama to get the draw, though? Why didn't he do that? Um, You only get the draw off Nikatama if you control oh. another spirit. Okay, so that makes sense. So wait, where did he misplay? Did, was it... It'll, you'll, you'll see, it's coming up right here. So I draw into the bear, Which... and I'm, I'm thinking like, oh, I could just go ahead and swing and attack and get a search off Tanky, but guess what? I have a Thunder King on Yeah, but if you Dark Hole, you can still remove the threat. But, but he does I, have, I have a BLS a, on the a, board a, a, next turn. Exactly. So I have to I have to contemplate for the fact that he has a BLS that's going to be his next mm-hmm. draw. So I'm thinking, how can I deal Which, with that? That's actually turning out really good for you, because if he summons it, since it's an inherent, you're able to negate it. And exactly. just provided he can't put damn it, like enough damage on board to spell out game, then that Thunder King's going to actually come in handy. And the Volvo Chain's not big enough to get over that Thunder King to make sure BLS can be dropped safely, which is very good. At the same time, with just the amount of back row that he has, too, there's just so many mm-hmm. factors to consider that I was just trying to figure out the best play to just completely just somehow swing the game back into my favor. And help once again just simplify the game state. Fire Kings love a simplified game state. That's like their game. Yeah, but you're working around like the known back row. You're working around two live breakthrough skills in the graveyard. You're working around a void exactly. trap hole. You're working around just there's a lot of factors mm-hmm. and two going unknowns, on. which is still also very powerful. They could be anything. Like, mm-hmm. does he happen to show what they are at the end of the game? Well, you're gonna find out, well, gonna find out right here because I summon the bear. I see that he's okay with it, and I'm actually going to overlay into Exiton. Okay. And the reason for this, I know he has the Void Trap Hole, so I can't get Void Trap Hole. And the misplay where Doug made was that he used that Breakthrough Skill in his back row, and now he can't Breakthrough Skill my Exiton. Yeah, he could have used that Breakthrough Skill that was in his graveyard. That was also a weird play, I assumed. Oh, and he lets it all go, which is a Dimensional Prison. Another, mm-hmm. what is that, a dark, Deep Dark Trap Hole? It's a Deep Dark Trap Hole, oh, wow. yeah. <laughs> and i read i read the middle back so that was a great read but you're still earlier. having to play around this black luster soldier that's going to come down which isn't that big of a deal because i have the dark hole and so i know i can't get gamed unless i know his other card in his hand is yaksha so i know the amount of damage he can put on board cannot game me 
So I figure I'm in a good position because on my turn, I can dark hole the BLS and I can do, hopefully draw a card that will be somewhat good. In before Honest. Wow, if you had Honest, that would actually be very ridiculous. <laughs> but like, it seems like he's going to put like a lot of damage on board to put you kind of in like the danger zone. So, I mean, the Dark Hole is going to come in handy, but unless you're able to top deck into at least a monster, you're still going to be in a very difficult situation. Absolutely, but I, I calculated that out ahead of time before I made that Exiton play. That's why it took me so long. And wait till you oh, see what I Oh, an onslaught of the fire. That's very powerful. This is why this is the most broken card <laughs> Now, is there anything you can actually special summon that can get around that BLS? Um, not by itself. And so what I am actually forced to do is, I was actually thinking that same thing. But I actually do summon the Garunix, and I have to use the Dark Hole well, wait, right now. The uh, Fire King, it's going to get destroyed during the end phase, and during the standby phase, uh, it's going to come back and destroy that Black Luster Soldier. So it would, except for the fact that Doug has two breakthrough skills. True, that is very... So if I did not do that, he could have just breakthrough skilled my Garunix and attacked me for game right there. So this way, I clear the board, Garunix comes back, and I actually have board control. That's really right powerful now, now but... And we know and there's I, a Yaksha in hand, and now there's an unknown back row just set. And as long as that's not a dimensional prison, I can just swing for and my life. It looks like that's what you're going to do. Hopefully, Doug can't worm his way out of this, but he does have that Mystical Space Typhoon to hit that bottomless, which is presumably what he top decked into. It is what he top decked into. And is there's a set monster. Into. It looks like you have control of the game at this point, Alex. So as long as. Well, how much attack does Barong have? 18? That's just 18. enough. So as long as this isn't like it, it's not even a fire hand would be really good right now either because it wouldn't do too much damage. But that's an Aratama, which is going to get him a Nikatama. Exactly, and I know from that point that that's he can game make because he's going to get the Nick. Exactly. So, right there, exactly. so from right there, I knew the game was over. But I chose to attack with the Grunix there in case it was a Nikitama because Nikitama has two thousand mm -hmm. defense, and so me being at such low life. Actually, it's only it's not eight two thousand, but um, it is eighteen hundred because he just summoned it. But he's gonna yeah. make cowboy, and unfortunately, that's gonna spell out the swift two zero from Doug. It is, but you know what? It is, but you know what? It was still a really good match. That was especially a really game two. yeah, that was, was a, a really intense forward. match till the very end there. So it was very fun to watch, very entertaining. Yep. Thank you, and thank you all so much for watching the video, and we'll see you in the next match.